Hi, and welcome to HSC. Thanks for watching our video about safely charging your unmanned aircraft battery. So I'm gonna walk you through what we have on the table first. First device here is an AC to DC power supply. So this is from our friends over at Max Amps. Best 24 volt power supply that we found. We love it, great support from them. So again, AC power supply. This guy's your charger. This is a Hyperion EOS 720i Super Duo 3. We love this charger, a lot of reasons. Um, one, the intelligence, the software, the programming, all of the, set, uh, the settings and features uh, we find are really convenient and also provide a, a consistent and safe operation. So we're really happy with it. And then you've got a battery. Today we'll be charging the Tattoo Plus. This is a smart battery, pretty new in the industry. Really, really great system. Battery management system or the BMS here notifies you of any extreme voltage changes or overcharge or undercharge, all that stuff. Love it. Little fuel gauge on the side there. It tells you how your voltage is in the battery. Um, and it watches each individual cell as well. So uh, Tattoo Plus, this is a 16,000 milliamp battery or 16 amps. So a good size battery here, okay? Now you'll see some other things on the desk as well. So one thing is this little nickel metal halide battery. If you're flying an Ag VA product from us, you'll have one of these for your navigation lights. So all your LED lights are powered from this guy. So we'll charge that. This is the connector for that. Over here, you'll see a couple different charging cables. Depending on the ends of your battery, you might use this in conjunction with this or just this. So just take a look and you'll have all of the items that are required with your charging equipment, okay? Next things we've got is a balancing board and the cable that goes from the balancing board hooks at the top here and then here connects to the very bottom of the charger. We'll go through that in a moment. And then finally, the cable that connects the balancing board to the battery. Now, depending on your type of battery, if it's the same one, it'll be on the bottom. If it's different, look around. You'll see like a six or a seven or a 10 pin uh, plug here. And then you're just basically looking for that and that battery will come with its own or the charger itself comes with a lot of generic ones. So anyway, there's your options, okay? Now we're gonna start the actual charging itself and I'm gonna walk you through what items to plug in when, risks and concerns and just how to do it, okay? So here we go. Now that we've got everything laid out and you know what we're looking at here, the first thing we're gonna do is connect the charger to your Max Amps power supply, okay? I do this first before plugging in this just to prevent the uh, potential little spark. It's harmless, more of a preference thing. And you always wanna be mindful of where you place this. It's got fans on the back, intakes on the front, etc. So you wanna just be mindful that it has plenty of room to breathe. On the back of your charger, you'll notice three variable speed fans as well. You wanna make sure those have plenty of ventilation too. So I wouldn't necessarily place it like this. It's too close together. I might, however, if I chose, stack them on top or have one facing here. Maybe I have the other one here next to it, right? So there's plenty of ventilation, okay? Just be mindful of that. You should also always charge in a fire resistant and fire retardant setting. You also should have a bucket of sand nearby and a fire extinguisher as well to be able to put out any fires, okay? We're also gonna talk about another important step which is charging inside LiPo safe bags, okay? Now, on the back of your power supply, you'll notice here two plugs. So go ahead and plug in both of those. And then just plug them into an outlet. Now, when you look at the other items that are on the desk here, we're gonna start with a couple things. So. One thing I want you to be really cautious of and always pay attention to is that even when your battery is low or empty, if you will, you know, or storage state or anything, there's still voltage potential in the battery, right? So you'll notice the ends are protected, but sometimes people will think, okay, I've got to plug in my battery, right? And they'll plug these two in first. And just notice you've got two exposed pieces here and there's great potential. So you could have an arc here, a spark, catch a fire, uh, injure yourself. So just be mindful of that. We always unplug this last. We plug it in first and unplug it last, okay? So it's a great rule of thumb. We just want you to be safe. So before hooking this up, I'm gonna plug these leads in, black to black, red to red. It's your common sense tip of the day. And then here, we're gonna connect the two of these, black to black, red to red. Great. Now that we've got the battery connected, and mind you, we're doing this in the step. This should all be powered on before you connect the battery, okay? The next thing we're gonna do is connect our balancing cable. So here, I'm gonna pull this up, plug it into the bottom side here. Plug this, you'll see on the side, it has the number of cells. So this is a six cell battery. So I'm gonna plug this into the 6S portion. And then I'm gonna plug this to the bottom of the battery here. Pretty simple, pretty straightforward. Make sure all connections are fit and snug. And then we're gonna place this battery in the LiPo safe bag, okay? Now, we suggest always having access in the event of an emergency to be able to unplug that battery. 
So you'll notice I'm gonna package this here is so I'm gonna put it tail end first so the connectors come out of the top. We've got plenty of room. Push it towards the back. Then you'll see I'm gonna fold these lines, pull these wires, both the balancing cable and also your leads out to the side, and then I'm gonna seal the bag. Okay, that way if there's ever an emergency, I can pull the power from the battery and disconnect it in both cases, right? What I would not do is I would not unplug from here because again, there's still potential here. So I would never unplug from here. I would unplug from here. Now we're gonna take a look at the settings and how to actually start the charging on the charger. Now that the charger and the battery are all connected, I'm gonna walk you through a couple different things you're gonna see on this charger. Again, refer to the charger manual for any specific questions that we don't talk about here today. First thing I'm gonna to point to is you've got two sides. It's a dual port charger. Here's output side one, output side two you'll see a flashing number in the corner of the display that's active. And what I mean by that is that anytime this number one is flashing, it means that everything we do on the panel here relates to the battery that's plugged in on this side, okay? To change, just hit channel, okay? Now we're dealing with everything happening on this side. It's also an important note to keep in mind that keep all your cables clear so that you don't ever accidentally plug in battery one with battery two's balancer plug. Okay, so just always keep a nice clear cut of those cables there, all right? So the first thing you're gonna see is memory number one. Now your charger likely came from us pre-programmed with memory number one and memory number two. Number one being for the aircraft battery, number two being for the navigation lights battery, this guy here, okay? Now the settings that you might deal with in here are your charge rate or your amps, your charge amps. And you'll see as this display alternates, it'll say LiPo 22.2 volts, 16,000, which is the battery information. Then it says C, 1.5 for 15 amps. Yours might stay eight or seven or five to start with. The other number that you'll see is a D for discharge amps, and that's usually five. Now, the most common thing that you'll change on this screen is the charge amperage. So how many amps you're putting into the battery. To adjust that, press the down button. You'll scroll past the other settings. Get down to charge current. You'll press enter once so it's flashing and then increase or decrease as necessary. Mind you, this is gonna depend on how much amperage you can pull out of that breaker, okay? When I'm finished, it's flashing, right? Just press enter to save that. Okay, you can go down and up to see some other settings as well, but again, that's your most common one. Now I'm back to memory one. To start the charge, I'm gonna press and hold the enter button. You'll also notice on yours in gray, it says start and stop, so it double serves as those functions as well. Press and hold. Now it says charge start, solo mode, which means I'm charging one battery by itself, not related or timed to a second battery charging, okay? Can also uh, hit the up and down button to go to store start, um, discharge start, etc. Okay, we're doing charging, so we're gonna press and hold enter again. Now it says battery check. So it's checking that the battery connected matches the type of battery I told it. It says connected cells, 23.2 volts. It's a six cell, is that right? I can either press enter to start charging, or if the balancer connector is connected, it will automatically start on its own after a few seconds, okay? Now, as it's charging, the battery's charging started, we'll probably hear the fans ramp up in a moment here, but it says LiPo, so low charge, and the display changes. There goes our fan. Now, you'll also see down here is your input amperage. So right now, we're at 9.8, there's 10.3, 10.7, 11.1, et cetera, et cetera. It's ramping up that amperage, right? And this balancer cable is allowing the charger to watch the voltage of each individual cell in real time. So because of that, you'll notice that amperage going up and down and fluctuating, okay? It's totally normal, it's what it's supposed to do. On the right side of the bottom here, you'll see the current voltage in that battery. So we'll see that continue to climb. Now to do the same exact thing for the nickel metal halide, we'll connect that battery here. Same thing, I'm gonna plug the charging leads in first and then connect the battery, right? Here it is, red to red, black to black. Make sure that's correct. Now that we have our accessory battery, in this case the navigation lights battery connected, we're gonna to go to channel two. So again, make sure the two is flashing. And then to change from memory one, which again is for your lithium polymer batteries, we're gonna just press the enter button once till memory number flashes. And then we're gonna go down to two, press enter. Now here you're gonna make sure that you see NIMH for nickel metal halide, 4.8V and 2000. If your charger says anything other than that, then go down through the menu and change it to, it says nickel metal halide again, 4.8 volts, and then um, 2000 milliamps, and then you'll see a charge amperage of 2.0. Now, once that's set, then just press and hold the enter button like we did on the other side. Charge start normal, press and hold, checking battery. Great, 
and it starts the charging. Again, starts at a very low amperage, then moves up to 2.02 fairly quickly, and we'll get that battery to where it's supposed to be. That's pretty much it. And then we'll come back in a moment for what to do to remove the battery from the charger once it's finished. When the battery is fully charged, this charger will make a tone. If you play a little song, you can customize which song it plays, and then it will make this constant beep every five seconds or so after that, reminding you that the battery is finished. It is important that when the battery is finished charging, go ahead and remove it from the charge. You'll notice a couple different things. When you're charging two batteries, you might have one that's finished and one that's not. So you're looking for here, instead of it saying charge solo, it says charge end. And the best indicator is that the timer stopped, okay? You can scroll up and down to look through the data for what was put into the battery as far as milliamps go and voltage, etc. You would document that on your battery log. Now, in this case, we're just going to remove it from the charger. So we're going to press and hold the enter button to stop, even though the charging is technically finished. That'll go back to the main screen. So you'll see memory number one or two, whatever's charging. And then again, the order is key. So I'm not going to unplug from here because I have voltage potential in the battery. So instead, I'm going to unplug at the battery, either at a connector like this or here. In this case, we're going to disconnect from here. Okay. And then after that, unhook the balancer cable. So you can do that either from the board, here, here, or at the battery, doesn't matter, okay? In this case, I'm gonna remove it from here at the board. And then that battery is complete. Now, when I'm finished charging, the next thing I do is just unplug my AC to DC power supply. Thanks again for watching, and we hope this was helpful. And again, if you have any questions, reach out to us or any of the manufacturers that you have specific questions about. Thanks again for watching, and have a great day.